One, two, one, two. Are we good? We're good. What's going on there, folks? Earth, Earth Master here, I think. It is, uh, goodness. What is today? Are we in Saturday or is this Sunday? Looks like we're into Sunday already. November 26, 2023, about 12.03 p.m. California time. On this end of the weekend, a little point nine, a little earthquake up there. We're down there, I should say, along the Middle America Trench. We did see some uptick here overnight across this western edge here of the Filipino plate. Uh, kind of said to keep an eye on that. And sure enough, things filled in quite nicely in that area. Going to give a quick glance here of the Iceland activity. Slight uh, slight uptick overnight, looks like. We've got about 92 earthquakes here, various magnitudes. Uh, the largest looks to be a 2.1 earthquake. Uh, down here around the Grindavik area of Iceland. Now the uptick definitely uh, visible here on the chart. Over the past couple days we've noticed a decline in earthquake activity here. Uh, with an uptick in movement uh, a little bit further away from this area. I want to say uh, up along this region up here I believe. But uh, yeah look at this. Uh, north of Hagafell. Around this uh, region right here just to the east of this um, previous volcano activity got a pretty good cluster of movement today it looks like uh, variable depths all over the place it looks like let's see here I don't know why it does that it's so weird I don't want it to go way up there when I just I'm not even really clicking on the chart <laughs> all I'm doing is just hovering over it um, but definitely seeing some earthquake uptick here today it looks like um, Three kilometers uh, for that earthquake. Looks like three kilometers for that one. Three kilometers or so. Uh, fairly consistent, it looks like, in terms of the um, magma that's below here. And uh, getting a little bit of activity further down into the Green Devic region and south as well. So definitely uh, some uptick going on here today in the terms of the magma intrusion that's going on within this area of Iceland. Um, day number two with no updated information here from the folks at the Icelandic Meteorological Office here. I mean, that's the most recent page update. And uh, this is from the 24th, so we're looking at two days ago. Uh, I'm pretty certain that they will uh, post up a update here tomorrow, hopefully. Here's that trend of earthquake activity that had been pretty much declining here in the last couple days. I'd say maybe the last week or so we've seen that decline in earthquake activity around the Green Devic region. Uh, but today is a different story. We're definitely seeing that uh, on the uptick here today. So we'll continue to watch that and report back on any major changes that do take place out here. For now, just uh, kind of watching it. Uh, some further activity up here around the Andaman Islands, India region, northern edge, well northern edge. Uh, it's not even associated with the Java Trench, but uh, there are some subduction zones up here near the Port Blair area in the Andaman Sea region, the 4.9, 10 kilometers deep for that earthquake. Uh, the movement that we're noticing here across the western areas of the Filipino plate are fairly prominent here. You can see them in the red circles. Uh, these kind of kicked up there just after... Uh, just after midnight or so, a lot of this earthquake activity here, including one south of Manila, 5.1 coming in, 121 kilometers deep. A lot of activity up here across Taiwan uh, with a couple fives and some fours up there. Uh, over here around the Mariana Islands, uh, most of this from yesterday. We did see one further earthquake this morning, a 4.6 coming into that same area uh, that seen that 6.9 here couple days back so a lot of earthquake activity here within this region of the Mariana Trench and now like I said overnight we've seen that uptick picking up here across the edges where we expect it to the general plate movement here this is the Filipino plate the red one right here the general plate movement of the Pacific plate is towards the west northwest these arrows pointing in the direction of which the plate travels that travel uh, creates strain and stress against these plates here. Uh, you got the Kuro Kamachaka Trench up here, Filipino Plate, 
All this is reinforced and backed up by the Eurasia plate that's heading towards the southeast. So a lot of pressure, a lot of strain being built up specifically around this plate boundary. I don't think we're over yet uh, with the earthquake activity around this region. We could see some further uptick, up, uh, maybe a little bit further up along the Izu Trench area, um, or maybe even further south. We haven't really seen a whole lot of activity. Now, let's go back here and look at the last seven days or so. Not a whole lot up north in the Izu Trench area, but I'm not 100% certain that we're going to see much activity after the, uh, remember all that movement here a couple months ago? We had a huge, big time swarm up here. Um, hundreds of earthquakes in this area with really no large main shake. There was a few sixes and some fives, but it was crazy. Um, I'm a little bit more concerned with this area down here, south of this region. Uh, we haven't really filled in too much here. So areas up north, now the Middle America, or not the Middle America, but the uh, Northern Mariana Islands area, the middle portion of this trench, or this plate boundary, I should say. Uh, we should see things fill in here. So keep an eye on that area. Um, a little bit further down south here around Guam. Uh, back over here around the Fiji area, we did see a little bit of movement overnight, including a 5.4 in the Vanuatu area. Now, that's about it though. Doesn't look like any activity down in New Zealand or uh, up along the Tonga Trench region. Pretty quiet. This is like day number two or day number three of uh, uh, some fairly quiet conditions out here. Let me check out the... Uh, GeoNet servers here, the New Zealand folks. See if uh, anything is going on here. Of course, they're always going to have some type of small earthquake activity, right? Microquake activity, but I'm not really too concerned about that. That's just like any given area along a major plate boundary is always going to see earthquake activity. But it doesn't look like we're seeing any huge swarm um, activity taking place. The earthquake drums will give us a good indicator if there is any, or maybe if there's some movement that uh, is not being noted. This right here looks like some type of interference. Um, if these were equal along this chart, uh, I would say maybe there's some earthquake activity, but these are this chart's independent from this one, and these are on different timestamps. So uh, a little bit of earthquake activity here, it looks like. Some of those smaller quakes shown up, South Island area. Uh, but overall, seismic activity, it looks, it looks fairly quiet. There's one earthquake um, about five hours or so ago, mainly down to the south of the South Island area. So what stirred up down there? Was it, I don't think it was this one. No, it had to have been something over here. But I'm really not seeing it on the USGS map. Nor the uh, EMSC model. But it looks like there's some type of earthquake activity stirring up down here that showed up on the uh, South Island Station. South America, handful of earthquakes as well. Middle America Trench, about the same as yesterday. Still seeing a little bit of elevated movement here across that region. Uh, far as the West, Co uh, West Coast goes, California and Washington area. Typical movement up there across some of the Cascade volcanoes, but just generally small microquake movement a look at the 2.5 map and above well looks like we had a 2.7 here uh, north of uh, Mono Lake area off 395 very shallow 0.6 kilometers there for that 2.7 also the uh, Octello Wells area seen a 2.5 that's a little bit further down south just off the Elsinore fault here uh, that was about uh, 4 o'clock this morning. We are seeing uh, some elevated microquake activity here across the entire length, almost, of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Some slight activity stirring up here, so may see things start to pick up. No guarantee, though. This area has been awfully quiet uh, in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, last 30 days of 2.5 and above. Look at this. This is very spotty for Southern California. All right, uh, further east, nothing going on here at Yellowstone, at least according to, to the folks there, the USGS, but uh, uh, still seeing a handful of earthquakes here, it looks like. 
mainly around the Mary Lake area and the earthquakes in question are going to be uh, these right here all these little spikes some of them now are showing up a little bit further south around the Little West Thumb and the Grant Village area it's going to be these little spikes right here those are still very small earthquakes um, even the ones that are showing up on these other stations that are probably below the 2.0 uh, threshold and these other ones up here probably below the 1.0 threshold but still there's a little bit of earthquake activity occurring there uh, Texas Pecos Texas area looks like a couple earthquakes today just an ongoing sequence of earthquake activity out there in the oil fields um, New Madrid seismic zone did see a 2.0 well that's kind of outside there a little bit uh, more towards the Appalachian Mountains area 2.0 there in Dayton Tennessee 24 kilometers deep that's pretty deep uh, I wonder if this is a legit earthquake or not uh, it has been reviewed but that's uh that's actually pretty deep there for that area I uh, have one little earthquake with a 2.2 South Carolina region just before midnight my time last night in South Carolina handful of earthquakes again around the Puerto Rico trench and even a couple right smack dab on the plate boundary itself 60 kilometers deep or so uh, major hazard area here been watching this region for a little while remember earlier this year we did see an odd little earthquake off of the plate boundary more up in this plateau region of the oceanic crust and that's just a sign here of some incredible strain and stress uh, there there is definitely some potential here for some larger activity I thought I felt an earthquake but I'm really seeing my uh, earthquake rock swing back and forth yet it would definitely let me know uh, Norwegian Sea 4.5 way up here divergent boundary zone that could be why we're seeing some elevated uh, earthquake activity here across this Iceland region today things may be getting ready to get active across this area once again uh, one earthquake over here in Mara uh, Romania as well 4.2 and some slight activity there around Iran 4.5 coming in just after two o'clock this morning here Let's see here the rest of the region there's some of those mentioned earthquakes it looks like there's a couple earthquakes up here north of Iceland we'll have to keep an eye on that all right what do we got anything major going on here for space weather activity today well unfortunately the bad news is that we're pretty much stabilizing in terms of the complexity with the massive amounts of sunspots that we've seen here on the earth facing side of the sun recently they have all uh, pretty much decayed into nothingness um, they're still there obviously but uh, the in the, uh, the complexity of all these magnetic cores are uh, they're fairly stable so I don't expect too much here from this region same for potentially this area down here this region looks like it may have a little bit of possibility a little bit of growth within this uh, this regional sunspot here and still got my eye on this area I think this is 3500 it does uh, pose a little bit of flaring threat and that is the most likely area of some flaring if it does take place 3500 down here still looks fairly complex uh, 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 40 x flare around five percent probability but uh again i think the only region that we should watch right now is going to be 3500 over here with the uh complex structure that it harbors um solar weather activity in terms of the auroras have calmed down nicely there since uh last uh, wasn't last night but the other night seen a g2 class storm kick up there but things are kind of mellowing out right now we'll wait for some further some further activity here hopefully from uh at least maybe 3500 hopefully we can get uh, a cme or something earth directed to kick things back up all right storm prediction center here today not a whole lot of severe weather we're only looking at uh, chances of thunderstorms out here across florida and uh, up along the northeastern coast that's about it though Numerical models, well, there's some of that colder weather and snow venturing into the Great Lakes area. This is today's forecast as we head 
into early next week. That will all shift further to the east and northeast. Most of the country dry as we head into Monday. Uh, as we head into the middle of the week, we do have a little low pressure system here that's going to bring in some uh, a little bit of shower activity here to California. Not expecting much. That's about Wednesday or so. Uh, we do have some uh, potential for some severe weather. Looks like maybe Thursday, Wednesday into Thursday, um, maybe even into Friday as well. Uh, could be a, a couple day setup down in Texas and portions of the south, also stretching up into Arkansas area. Uh, see some uh, severe weather potential. We'll check into that though as we get closer to that time period. Another storm potentially hitting our area out here in California come Thursday and Friday. Not a big storm. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger one come this weekend. And uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we open that storm door and uh, California starts getting the rain that we need. Obviously, we're not in a huge drought anymore, but we could easily slip back into it if we don't get the sufficient rainfall that, we're, that we should be getting here this year with a El Nino event. All right, guys. Um... Oh, gosh darn it. This thing didn't come back overnight, so I'll have to see if it will pop back up. A lot of times they do, and then a lot of times they don't, so it may just be offline. I'll have to see if I can maybe reset this a little bit later on to get that uh, Iceland earthquake activity seismograph station back up and running, but for now, we will just... Uh, We'll get rid of that and then just add a Mammoth Lake station here onto the chart. Southern California, again, a little bit of earthquake activity in the microquake range popping up. Uh, we're seeing one right now, a little small spike on that station there. Barrett, that uh, station is down there. Uh, roughly around this area here, right around the Elsinore Fault or maybe in between the uh, these two fault systems here. So I'll just... Kind of watch today, see how it goes. Enjoy your Sunday. And uh, not bad out here in Northern California right now. About 62 degrees, sunny. Uh, but I'd rather have it rainy and uh, a little bit cooler. That's my taste of the weather I like. I like it in the wintertime. It's supposed to be cold and rainy in the wintertime, right? Not supposed to be able to get out there and get a suntan in the winter. That's just not my thing. Have a good one. Stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Take care, folks.